Is she dead? Yeah. Um, well, we were trying to get everything done, and it was one thing after the other. You know, when the computer trying to get set up and get the desk sure. taken care of, and so my whole thing did not get set up today. It's just been one shit storm after the other. And I well, look, this is blunt talk, so uh, you can bitch about it. All you want. <laughs> I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to. But before we get started, and I you, end up you, this- we, we are started. We're on the air, brother. Okay. Right now. Well, I, I wanted to get up and started by saying first, um, I am very thankful to be here. I've had save it, a- save it, save it. Don't okay. worry about it. You but ready I- to go? You want, you want to go live? Let's do it. Let's do it. Welcome, everybody. It's Tuesday night. It's 4 p.m. in Los Angeles, California. 6 o'clock in Chicago, Illinois. 2 p.m. in Singapore. And 7 p.m. in New York City. Hello, everybody. This is Mad Dog DeCipio. Tonight, the premiere maiden voyage of a brand new edition to the What's the Buzz podcast family. Tonight, we bring you Blunt Talk Radio. And to join me in this brand new endeavor, the man who has aptly named the show, Kevin Blunt. Great to be here. How are you, brother? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm pissed the fuck off. (laughs) (laughs) I am ready to ring you. I have to tell everybody, because we tell our listeners everything. I tell everybody uh, that works with me here on the show. Join me in studio at 6.30 so we can go over some key notes so we can talk a little bit about what we're doing tonight. Kevin kept me waiting till 10 minutes to 7. It was Not, a hot Because his computer decided to take a shit on him at the last minute. As you, why, what else should be different, right? Why, like, why not? Because this <laughs> is, this is how things go. Live radio. So what we decided to do was wait it out a little bit, let my blood pressure come down a couple of seconds, and bring Kevin on here. He's new at this, folks, so just bear with me. Um, so, Kevin, this is your uh, your maiden voyage with Papa Bear. Um, you Now that you know why they call me Papa Bear and Mad Dog. Yes, sir. Um, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to... Um, I'm just going to have tonight. We're going to have an introductory session. Okay. I want to talk about a few things, but I want to introduce you to everybody. Kevin is a guy that I found on Facebook. I just, I had a good feeling about this kid. Um, I, I call him a kid. He's probably a, a father and grandfather, but to me, he's a kid. Goes, not, not a grandfather yet. Not a grandfather yet. But you're a papa. How old are you, Kevin? Tell everybody. I'm how old 50. You. I'm 50. He's a puppy. <laughs> He's a puppy, okay. The old man is like, I was. You realize I was a, I was sixteen years old when you were born. But you still yeah. got you've got the energy though. You got fifteen. I'm not sorry. Fifteen. Fifteen years old when you were born. Okay, I have to have the energy. I do a radio show, brother. <laughs> so here's what we're gonna do. Blunt Talk Radio was born out of. This desire, you know, sometimes, you know, I have a feeling for things. And um, people who know me, they know what I do for a living. I'm a psychic. That's what I do. So your wife's going to love that one. Um, <laughs> Melissa, his wife, he's got a wonderful wife. His redeeming quality is his wife, Melissa. She's a wonderful lady. And she's Italian. Great I woman. I love an Italian woman. <laughs> I love Italian women so much I married one. <laughs> <laughs> My wife Anita, I love that woman. Um, so here's the deal. Uh, I found Kevin. I said, you know what? I'm gonna take a chance on this kid. I'm gonna take a chance on him. 
and I'm going to see what what he's got, what kind of chutzpah he's got. Come to find out, Kevin always wanted to do a podcast. Absolutely, yep. So now, tell everybody, uh, is it like fate or serendipity? What's the deal here? How did we come to meet each other? It, we just, it just was happenstance. We just friended each other on Facebook. We were friends of friends. And then we just started going back and forth over um, um something. I posted a news thing, I think it was last week or the week before. And we yes. started talking back and forth about a, a news article. And that's really how we yeah. we connected and started talking over that. And we have a lot of the same. That's same what things. it was. It was, I, I think you're absolutely right. It was something you posted on Facebook. Yeah, it was a. I a remember story. now. And then yeah. we started, and that's what really led to because we've that's been friends for a while. I and think really... it might have been Kevin, like a political post, yeah, or something. Because yeah. because you know, it, if it's got something to do with politics, I'm like a magnet. I'm drawn to it. Yep, that's um, that's exactly what we're it was. We're going to talk about some of our favorite things tonight. I know that you and your wife love a good conspiracy theory. Yep. Well, you're talking to Mr. Conspiracy. This whole show basically was built around conspiracy theories. This this entire network, really. Although we started off as, and people who know our history, we started off as a professional wrestling podcast uh, five, five and a half years ago. Okay? It was a long time ago. And who is this? Joy Decker. Who is oh, that's a, that, that's a friend of mine. Well, she's in my studio, and I have to get rid of her. Oh, I don't know how she got there. Yeah, no, that's that's not for that link is not for them, brother. No, I didn't. I I don't think I just put a thing on there. To put, I thought I put the Facebook thing up for him to join the 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 YouTube channel thing. I thought. Yeah, I didn't put the link. Uh, yeah, up there. but she <laughs> Joyce is in my studio. <laughs> no, no, I didn't put that link up there. No, I don't know how that. I'm going to defer that to the why? line. <laughs> We almost had another live guest here, folks. <laughs> that's funny. That you believe it or not, Kevin, that's actually happened before. I, I had a guy. It's funny. What the funny part was, he was actually a guest on a show, but it wasn't my show. They gave him the wrong link. The station gave him the link to my show, not oh. the show he was supposed to be on. So I said, um, who are you and why are you in my studio? <laughs> and he said, I said, no, brother, that's you're on the wrong show. <laughs> I said, if you if you leave now, you can make it in time. You got a couple of minutes to get there. <laughs> but it's crazy. And anyway, but that's live radio. This is this. And I love radio because this is what we do. And it's live and you can't take it back. And I, uh, I, we are broadcasting tonight live. On our brand new YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash at Blunt Talk Radio. We are also broadcasting on our flagship channel, What's the Buzz Popcast, youtube.com forward slash at What's the Buzz Popcast. Um, we are also a part of the Psychic Realm Network. We'll be joining on the Psychic Realm Network next week, in, as a matter of fact. And we will be broadcasting live next week on five YouTube channels. Five. The most at one time that we've ever done. You're a busy man. I'm a fucking crazy man. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you, Kevin, let's get into a little bit of news today. Okay. Okay. Um, Situation happened a couple days ago last week, I guess. Joy Decker. Hold on. I got to bring this woman in here. <laughs> yes, ma'am. May I help you? I'm just listening. You're listening. Hi, Can Joy. you listen from your radio? Because you're in my studio right now. Oh, I am. Yes, ma'am. You are on the air live. <laughs> <laughs> your, your cousin gave you the wrong link, I think. Oh, she probably did. Leave it to her. That's that's yeah. okay. Listen, Joy. Um. I want you to sit back, enjoy the show. I will send you. Um, do you know how to send, uh, Kevin, do you know how to send Joy a, a link to the YouTube channel? Um, I will text that to my, yeah, I'll, I'll try to do it right now. All right. He's going to send you a link to our YouTube where you can watch us, okay? Perfect. Okay, okay. Joy, I'm going to kick you out of my studio again. <laughs> again? Bye-bye. <laughs> Okay. That's funny, folks. 
<laughs> hey, she's persistent, so. Hey, she's listening to the show. It's good. Yep. Beautiful. So, yep. yeah, we'll let the, let Melissa take care of that. Maybe she could do that. Yep. I'll let her Beautiful. do that. Beautiful. So uh, we were talking about, I was actually about to mention, a couple of days ago, or actually last week, we had a problem there in Memphis, Tennessee. Um, let's talk about Memphis and police brutality and racism and perce- or perceived racism in Memphis, given the fact that almost all the officers involved were African-American. Um, what's your take on this thing? A poor young guy named uh, Tyree Young. Uh, died and um uh, unfortunately he lost his life um he didn't have to no and and that was the fault of the memphis police department but do we chastise the entire department kevin or do we just reprimand and hold the te- the task those individuals that are actually accountable for the actions What's your take on it? Well, my take is obviously you have to start with the people that were involved. And I heard something today that I thought was really interesting. They were talking about, because this was a special group. It was called the Scorpion Group. It was like a, a crime task force group in Memphis. Yeah. And they were talking about what the, they thought that these guys might have been so insulated that they were within their own group that maybe they had become a little more comfortable in their skin that, than they should have. And they kind of started yeah. to waver on the outside of the rules and who knows how long that'd be going on for because they were comfortable enough to do they that got with an their body expression yeah you know what you're you're i think you're on to it kevin they got an expression down south called getting too big for your britches yes and i think these you- guys were getting a little too big for their britches um you, when you start getting too comfortable you make mistakes you fuck up People that get too comfortable in anything fuck up. And these guys in Memphis fucked up royally to the point where it cost a young man his life. I heard that they gave like 72 directives in 13 minutes on top of everything else. How could that poor kid? How do you want to what they do? The police, because I hate the cops. Okay, I'll just tell you, I hate the cops. And here's what the police do. They bombard you with orders. First of all, you're not legally required by law to listen to any order by a police officer. And here's why. You're a civilian. They're military. Okay? That's that's first thing. That's the first thing people need to know. They are military. The police are a paramilitary organization. You are a civilian. Okay? They have no power over you. They can ask you, they can give you a directive, but they cannot give you an order. Understand that clearly. And we've had police officers on this show, and thankfully, good cops that have been on this show and talked about it, how misunderstood the law is. These guys are enforcing the law, but they don't know the law. And they don't know the law. And, that's and they're trying to enforce laws they don't know. And that's a problem. How can you be holding up the law when you don't even know the rule book? That's the so. P- Hello. Give one to Kevin Blunt. Mm. That's the problem, brother. That's the biggest issue. How do you enforce laws that you don't know? That's for lawyers to do. Absolutely. Cops should direct traffic. They should help little old ladies and children across the street. Um, They should give tickets to speeding cars. They should do that stuff. But what they should not do is try to enforce laws that they're not aware of. Absolutely. Who's in my chat room tonight? Amen. Joy Decker. We're with you, Joy. (laughs) There's Joy. Now Joy can visit us here. And not in my studio. (laughs) Blunt Talk Radio is live on the air. Our premiere edition, Kevin Blunt, is your host. I am Mad Dog DeCipio. I am uh, the anchor tonight. Kevin will be much more comfortable in his own skin next week because I'm going to ream a new asshole after the show today. Um, And he's got it coming. 
It's yes, I do. There is uh, Kevin. Let's talk a little bit about uh, your feelings on crime and punishment. Um, do you support the police? I I, I don't. I I, not in their, to... I should say I don't support the police in their current incarnation. Continue, my friend. I, I think right now things are so upside down with a lot of huh. things in just society. I think they look at the hot button issues to yeah. where it doesn't. We we focus on things to where there's ninety percent of the people and the cops are good people, but the ten percent absolutely are. But the ten percent pointing that out. The, the police the, are good people. They're on your side. Yeah, but there's a handful of guys. There's five. Let's let's say there's five here, right? These five assholes are making that ten thousand look bad. Yes, and, and okay, it, they're, that's they the went, problem. It is because they went and they endangered a lot of good people's lives by their those actions that they took. Let me tell you what else they did. They castigated an entire community of police, the the whole nation. Do you realize that two years ago? Two years ago, there was rioting in the streets from people that were killing cops and and calling for defunding the police. Guess what? These fucking assholes are doing it again because of a handful of fucking ass wipes in Memphis that had to go stirring up old wounds. And that was it was so unnecessary. It does. Uh, you, you know, I always believe, Kevin, you get a lot more flies with sugar than you do with vinegar. Absolutely. Okay? So they should have taken a sweeter, um, a kinder, gentler approach. They could have taken care of this issue in five minutes. Well, now it's going to last five weeks when they have the trial. And the thing I haven't been able to find out yet is why did they even pull them over? I haven't found that in any of the news articles no, but at all. They're not saying. I think what they're doing is they're fudging the evidence to support their own claims. Because I well, don't trust the fucking cops. Well, there's And I'll be because... honest with you. I don't trust anybody, to be honest. To totally honest, I don't trust anybody. I don't trust 90% of what I, I see don't... on TV anymore. It's just a parody. It is so hard to decipher the truth out of anything anymore. Yeah. I, we, gaslighting has become everyone's yeah. favorite pastime, it seems like. Your wife is here. Hello, oh. Melissa. Hey, honey. Melissa, your, your microphone is muted. Huh. Oh, there she is. There you are. I'm here. There you are. How are Can you I doing? Can you a question, Melissa? What the hell are you doing in my studio? I get all these people are coming in my studio. Yeah, you're gonna you have the wrong link, them, honey. Oh man, this is crazy. You gave them the wrong link. <laughs> Give them the YouTube link because I'm I, I gotta kick everybody out. I gotta ban them yeah, from my studio. My cousin told me that you kicked her out. All right, listen, I gotta let you go. Bye, honey. Okay, I just had to kick your wife. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, this is live radio. Um, Kevin's wife, Melissa, gave Sweet them the girl. wrong link to listen to the show. So instead of listening to their radio or watching on YouTube, they're actually coming in the studio with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I've got the live one up on my page right there. It's right to go live. Yeah, I got it on my Facebook page. So it's the correct one is there. It's Oh, I know it's there. I, I put it there. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about the these guys. We don't know why they ever stopped this young man. No, and they there. I was there's been obviously been speculation that they might have known him that there could have been some prior issues with him, but that's yeah. just speculation at this point. But there was I heard a lot of chatter about that, but there's no way to really tell about that. And I heard also that there's firemen and other cops that are going to be suspended because their lack of intervening when there was yeah. obviously something wrong going on there. Oh, clearly they stood back and let it happen is what happened. Cause cops are going to cops are like doctors. They're you're never going to get a police officer to testify against another cop. You'll never get a doctor to go against another doctor. 
And if you do, he's got balls of steel. Yep. Unfortunately, we don't have any police in this country that's got balls. We don't have any doctors in this country that have balls. They've got mush for fucking balls. You know what they got? They got tater tot testicles. <laughs> that's what I call them. Tater tot testicles. No fucking balls, fellas. You got nothing. Peanuts. Let's talk about false flag events. Um, okay. One of your, uh, I'm sure your your subject matters that you're familiar with. Yes. Um, tell everybody what a false flag event is. A false flag event is something where they try to, from what I gather, it's where they try to pre- set some to perceive it to be something that it wasn't really. You're absolutely right. For example, I happen to believe that the Pentagon attack was a false flag. I happen to believe that Aurora, Colorado movie theater shooting was a false flag. I happen to believe Sandy Hook was a false flag. I don't think Sandy Hook ever happened. Really? I don't believe it ever happened. That Too is... many people from Sandy Hook were seen at the Pentagon. They were seen at Aurora. They were seen in Portland. Yeah. That you is can't ab- make this shit up. That is wild. They were seen. They're on film. The same people. How? What did they do? Transport? Yeah, that's crazy. They're you see called that? crisis actors. They're hired for the purpose of conveying realism. Okay? Let me tell you what happened back in the 1940s. A guy named Orson Welles, who was an actor and director, also a, a, a writer, a script writer. He did a radio show in the 1940s called War of the Worlds. Yep, I remember that. People were jumping out of their fucking buildings because they thought the world was coming to an end. Based on a radio show, that would be classic, classic false flag event. Classic. A radio show, of all things. Okay? I don't think Sandy Hook ever happened. I think there's too many indiscrepancies. I think there's way too many, I mean, way, way too many people involved that were involved in other incidents and on film to boot to boot so i don't once you do that one time you've blown all sense of credibility with me there's nothing left there's no credibility left and alex jones is going to die a martyr and you know what he's my hero and i'll support alex jones to the end he is a he is a piston for sure that guy really can get people he he has his point He's of view, got he, he, balls, he, Kevin. Yep, he gets people fired up and he starts a conversation. Whether you agree with him or not, it makes yeah. people think. And I respect He's that. He's the original blunt talk. <laughs> Alex is the original blunt talk. Yeah, I got one for you. I'm going down our little list. We're just going to have little conversations okay. along our way. Um, Here's something for the list. By the way, folks, we're calling tonight's show What a World. Um... How about the seek? What do you think about the secret space program? Do you think there's a secret space program? I had so many. I think there probably is because I've had so many issues with the space program, with the whole going to the moon and all that. That was we so never long went ago. to the moon. Let me well, just educate. I'm gonna smart you up, like they say in wrestling. We <laughs> never went to the moon, and I'm going to tell you why we never went to the went to the moon. We didn't have the technology. We didn't have the money. We didn't have the resources to get there. Buzz Aldrin, who is now in his 80s, okay? Buzz Aldrin slipped up in an interview. Luckily, I have a copy of it on film, okay? It's on film. It's how old this thing is. He slipped up when he was talking to a little girl. And he didn't realize there was a camera filming him. He says it would have been it, it it would have actually been nice to get there. Oh wow! He says that on film. That he's is gotta, wild. He doesn't realize that he's being filmed. It would have been nice to. He goes, but it really would have been nice to get there. That is wild. Whoa! I heard that and went, he fucked up. 
holy shit, mm. he's fucked up big time. Yeah, no kidding. Here's what I believe. And you could tell me to go fuck off or I'm wrong or whatever. Um, I believe that only is there a secret space program. I believe that they have extraterrestrial help. I believe they have extraterrestrial engineering. I believe that they have extraterrestrial knowledge. And I believe the secret space program is being run by and funded by black ops programs here in the U.S. Donald Trump, God bless him. And I mean that literally. Donald Trump, Donald Trump, God bless him, did something that no other president did. He created the United States Space Corps. Okay? Why? Why did he do it? The answer is very simple. To bring full disclosure and transparency into the space program. Absolutely. You know what else he did? He unleashed a whole shitload of documents on Groom Lake. You know what Groom Lake is, folks? Area 51. The first person to talk about Area 51, not that I like the guy, but I'll give him kudos for it, was Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton was the first president to publicly, openly, and loudly say, I want to know what's at Area 51. And he was president when he said it. The thing that's always amazed me with Area 51, and I've always said when I've been growing up, with you look at the technology now, you go back and you see like those B-1 bombers and stuff, when you didn't know what was going on, that would look like a UFO. Brother, let me tell you what happened. There was a guy named Kenneth Arnold in 1947, early part of 1947. That's the magic year for UFOs. 1947, Kenneth Arnold, who was a Navy pilot, flying over the... Um, um, the, uh, um, the Grand Canyon in Colorado and the and the Rockies. Okay. Right? Flying over the canyon area sees seven moon-shaped objects. Okay? He comes down. He tells everybody what he saw. The guy says, describe <laughs> Captain Arnold what you saw. He said they look like saucers skipping on water like flying saucers that's where we got the name flying saucers later that year in 1947 july actually 1947 july 8th two days before my birthday 1915 but not 1947 okay he um we go and we have this crash at roswell new mexico after the Roswell crash, something remarkable happened. All of a sudden, we had television. We had long-distance radio. We had technology that never existed. We had you know, uh, refrigerators that could clean themselves, ovens that could clean themselves. We had perpetual motion machines all of a sudden. After 1947, where did they get that technology? They got it from the UFOs, from the aliens who came down and said, this is why we came here, to give you guys some stuff. Makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. But you got to be open enough to have that kind of mind to think about it. Yep. So what do you think about the UFO thing? I'm kind of, I go back and forth on it a lot. I honestly don't, I, I think that we, I honestly think there's probably other life forms out there. I think it would be, but I also think it would behoove the government to not let, let us know about it. The government is arrogant, pompous, pious, and they're not going to tell you anything because they think you can't handle it. Absolutely. So if I, I'm oh. sure if they knew it, they wouldn't let us know anyway. Well, and that's why you've got people like this show. That's why we got people like Alex Jones and Glenn Beck. 
and people like that, and uh, George Norrie, and Giorgio Sukalos, and uh, William Henry, and David Childress, and you've got people like that in this country who do have the fucking cojones to tell you the truth about what's going on. The government thinks everybody's stupid. The government, particularly the military, the military thinks everybody's fucking brain dead, okay? Now let's just let's just understand what their mentality is. If the government says it, maybe believe it. But if the military says it, by God, it must be true. Okay? Here's what I think of the fucking military, okay? Here's what I think of the government. I love my country. I said it a million times. I love my country, but I hate my government. Because they're a bunch of lying, cheating, thieving, sneaking bastards. Corrupt to the core. With a feeble-minded old man running it right now. God help us all. Literally, God help us all. Um, I could get started on that subject for hours. These, Do we're, just doing, we're doing little, bl- little blurbs and blippets here. Do you think he's running for re-election? Who, Biden? Yeah. Do you think he's going to run for re-election? Of course he'll run. You know why? Because he's stupid, he's pompous, and he's pious, and they're going to, he's going to do what they tell him to do. Who are they? The Bilderbergs, the Rothschilds, the DuPonts, the, uh, uh, the Illuminati. Um, uh, the, the, like I said, the Bilderbergs. Um, he's going to do it. They all have a stake in it. The Bushes, the Clintons, the Kennedys. Yes, believe it or not, folks, there's still a bunch of Kennedys running around. Oh, yes. Okay? You haven't seen them in a while, but they're there. Oh, trust me, they're there. Um, but luckily, again, there are people, individuals, and groups, and people, and groups like QAnon, who I absolutely love. You know what, uh, anything about QAnon? I haven't really studied a lot in QAnon. No. I want you to check it out, QAnon. I will. Uh, I will do that. Yeah, no, I don't mean to do it right now. No, no, no. I was making a note. Yeah, because I see you're reaching for something. Um, yep. UFO bases and alien life. That's interesting. What really hit the Pentagon? Well, let me tell you something. I know what hit the Pentagon because I got the video. And I'm one of the very few people who have the video. Wasn't it? A and you're not level? getting it. And you're not getting it. Of course, it's locked away in a bank vault. Here is what hit the Pentagon. And it wasn't an airplane, ladies and gentlemen. It was a Scud missile. I thought, I, I thought it was a missile. What they And we through. have the video. Okay? We have the video. I've played it on this show not once, not twice, not three times, not four times, but five times I played it on this show. Five times. You know Why? Because America deserves to know the truth. But America, as they say, can't handle the truth. That's why your government lies to you. Because you're stupid, ignorant, moronic people who believe them. Well, guess what? Keep believing them. Okay? Keep fucking believing them. Jerry Lewis is with me tonight. That's (laughs) fucking hilarious. Jerry Lewis. He's a good guy. The internet has been scrubbed clean of anything related to QAnon. Well, Jerry, Jerry, hey, lady. Um, <laughs> Jerry, uh, if you're out there, and apparently you are, um, I will tell you that I know at least a block of the internet that has not been scrubbed of QAnon. Um, oh, Jerry Lewis Jr. Oh, no shit. How about that shit? And he's a junior. Ain't that something shit? Um, I happen to know quite a few people who have access to QAnon. In fact, I know one of the founders of QAnon. Dare I say this publicly, but I know who Q is. There really? You go. I'm going to go one better. I know <laughs> who Q is. You know? Show not snow. I'm with you, brother. Look. Love the snow so far. <laughs> <laughs> Brother, you came to the uh, F-Bomb Central. Um, 
Send me a link. I couldn't. Oh, she sent me a link. I couldn't find shit. Uh, see, Jerry's the kind of guy I like to have on the show. He's a good. Yes, you would love yeah, Jerry. I'm sure he'd be a great guest. Yes, he's a good um, guy. Yeah, we got to get Jerry Lewis on the show. Hey, lady. Um, <laughs> let's talk about. We're just going over some stuff tonight, folks. I'm just yes. introducing Kevin Blunt to the world. Here we go. What do you know about USAP? I don't know much about USAP at all. Let me tell you what USAP is. Unacknowledged special access programs. I'll give you an idea of what I'm talking about. The F-72 Aurora. It's an airplane that can fly faster than the speed of sound. Oh, wow. It's an airplane that can hit Mach 12. No airplane built so far can hit Mach 12, but the Aurora can. It's nuts, okay? It's nuts. Just Google what Mach 12 is, okay? I'm doing that right now. Do that. Crazy stuff. It's fucking bizarre. It cost almost 9,207 miles an hour. That is okay. flying. That's that's Mach 12. Okay? Yes. But your government doesn't think you can handle that information. They don't think you that you deserve the right to know that they spent almost three trillion dollars on building a fucking airplane that can fly Mach 12. In other words, that airplane, ladies and gentlemen, can go around the world in less than two hours. That is insane. You understand what we're talking? Do you understand how fast we're talking about? That, that airplane can take off in New York and land in New York within two hours. That's that, crazy. Yes. That's crazy fast. I wonder how much of an effect that would have on your body. I mean, that would be one strain. You'd be pulling some serious G's that entire time. Well, I mean, everything's relative, I suppose. If you're going that speed for any length of time, you, you, it's like anything else. You, you get accustomed to it for what, for that moment. Yeah, that's true. You know? Secret societies. What do you think about secret societies, Kevin? Oh, I think they're absolutely real. What are your, what are your, among your favorite secret societies? I got a couple that I love. Well, the one I've always been interested about is the Freemasons. We actually got a show coming up about the Masons. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. Um, we have a show coming up about the Freemasons and um, the Night Riders. Night Riders. You ever heard of them? I haven't. You, but you haven't studied much history, have you, youngin? Well, I, I have. I've kind of selected with my history, I guess. The Night Riders. They were a Confederate group back in the day. They were very much like the Freemasons. They were all cloak and dagger. They were um, very much hooded. They kind of reminded you of almost like, think of it like this. The Freemasons meet the Ku Klux Klan. Oh, wow. That's the Night Riders. <laughs> <laughs> and they were and still are a very, very real group. They exist today. Um, they're one of my favorite secret societies. My other favorite of course, Skull and Bones. I love the Skull and Bones Society. Um, I love the Council of Nine, the Committee of Three Hundred. You've never heard of them. I've heard of Council the Council of Nine. I've heard of that one. Okay, Council of Nine. You know who they are? No. They're the nine most powerful families in world history. Really. And how they maintain a seat on the Council of Nine is they have to, and I, I'm going to get, I'm sorry, folks, but I'm going to get graphic for a minute. Um, they have to fuck each other to keep it in the bloodline. In other words, it's very incestuous. Jeez. It's quite incestuous. Yeah. Um, that's how they stay in the bloodline. They gotta keep the they gotta keep the money in the family. And how do you do, like? I'll give you Kevin. I will give you the perfect, the quintessential bloodline, the royal family of Great Britain. 
You're not allowed to marry outside of the bloodline. But guess what? In recent years, they busted all the taboos. The two boys, Harry and William, they broke all the taboos. Yep. Okay. People don't realize that Princess Diana, rest her soul, Prince, who we did a show about on this, this uh, the network here, Princess Diana was related to Charles. I did not know that. They were third cousins. Really? They were, cousins. They were related. They were cousins. They got married, though, didn't they? Yep. And absolutely. had children, didn't they? Yep. Mm hmm. That is I, wild. I keep the bloodline pure. That is wild. And to the point where Harry just doesn't give a fuck anymore. He all but relinquished his, his royal, you know, um, trust. Yeah, he didn't several, want anything to do with it, yeah. Many, many, several millions of, you know, pounds, which is equal to, I mean, even more U.S. dollars. Of course, uh, our dollar is worth, their pound is worth, I think it's like one and a half dollars and uh, th their pound is worth two dollars and 12 cents. So the exchange rate here, you'll get more for a pound than you will there. Yep. It's so, yeah. Yeah. And that, that's pretty volatile. That moves quite a bit. I was just looking at a little chart on it. Like it's like a stock market thing for the pound to the dollar. It moves quite a bit. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It moves a lot. But right now it's two dollars and twelve cents. Wow! As of today, I'm amazed um, that monarchy is still a thing. I I just thought that it that was won't be. It won't be. I got news for you. It, it's it's my prediction. Uh, my prediction, and I believe this. In the next fifteen to twenty years, you're going to see that monarchy all but obliterated. It it, it, it won't even be. The, first of all, the queen was nothing more than a figurehead. Yes. And that's pretty much all they are now. But I feel bad because the British people are paying a tax to the, to the royals. Yep. And that's what they're living on. They, they don't do anything for a living. You realize, Kevin, none of these fucking people work. None of these royals have a job. No, their job is why, being, yeah. Why should they? The state's giving them fucking money. Yeah, I went and I looked that up about how they go about making their money. And they, and it's like they get tax revenue from their property that they live in. It's wild how it goes. Michael back. Bear is with me tonight. Michael Bear, another big player. is Oh, Dr. Stephen Greer. I've actually met Dr. Stephen Greer. We were going to have Dr. Stephen Greer on the show, but something came up and he had to decline. Um. So, uh, yeah, Michael, I know who Dr. Stephen Greer is. Absolutely, my friend. Thank you for the heads up on Dr. Greer. He's a um, good guy. Let's see what else Michael has to say. Game of Thrones is basically a documentary. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, Michael. Not only is it a documentary, it's a bad fucking documentary. Um, and Jerry Lewis says the monarchy is doomed. Jerry, you're absolutely right. I don't think it's going to, I say with 15 to 20 years, it's going to be nothing more than, than what it is now, a diminished figurehead. Um, I think that the boys, the young guys, uh, William and Harry, are going to have a lot to say about that. I believe that William is as stuffed a shirt as his father is. So when Charles does pass away, and William does take over as the, the next king of England, and he will, rest assured, he will, I will tell you um, that William is a stuffed shirt. He's going to run it like his father, which basically means into the ground. So don't worry about the monarchy. It's going to doom itself anyway, whether William helps it or whether it just dies a slow, painful death. It will die a slow, painful death. Well, Charles um, has done a lot to trim it up anyway. When he took over, he cut off a lot of the lower. He took a lot of the people's titles away from him or their importance anyway, and just made it more centered. Well, he 
Certainly did it to his brother, Andrew. Yep. Andrew's a fucking pervert, likes little girls. That whole thing's such a hot mess. If you've ever all- seen Andrew, you understand why, because he's ugly as a, <laughs> the, the fucking business end of a cow. That interview he you did know? with that lady was one of the most uncomfortable watches ever. Yeah. Just horrible. What do you think about um, guns in America, Kevin? I think that it's... I think that going after the Second Amendment is an easy cop out against the real issues. I I think that going after gun t- I th- all the things they're trying to do are just going to hurt the law abiding citizens. Yeah. Um I own a gun. My wife is very much Second Amendment, but uh-huh. I don't see how going in making things more strict for people that already obey, o- obey the rules is going to help anything. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, Kevin. Uh, hold on there. We got to do a commercial. We got to do some some spots here. Okay. We are at 15 minutes before the hour of 8 o'clock. We'll be right back, folks. Do you have sweaty balls or volleyball netty balls? It's time to make them ready balls. The Manscaped.com Lawnmower 3.0 will do the job and clean your knob with its patented no-nick head. So your head will function as desired. Enter promo code Wrestling Future for a generous 20% discount. That's enter Wrestling Future for a 20% discount. Manscaped.com and Wrestling with the Future going balls to the walls with Manscaped.com and the Lawnmower 3.0. Your balls will thank you. And so will we. What's Buzz Podcast wants to welcome Radioactive FM 88.6 in Wellington, New Zealand, Radio Perth, Australia, and RTL Radio 102.5 in Milan, Italy. Welcome aboard, and welcome to the Buzz. We are back with Blunt Talk Radio, and tomorrow night, I know I brought this up for a reason, tomorrow night, the mouth of the South will be here. Amelia, the Pitbull Chapman, and the Big Mouth. She'll be here with Carrie Jeffries. Oh, boy, she's a Big Mouth. Too. I'll tell you what, when you put these two women together, get out of their way. Get the <laughs> fuck out the way and let them talk. This, this girl talk at its absolute best, and I'm staying the hell of far, far away from that crowd. Uh, no, I can't. I have to produce that show. Oh, damn. <laughs> you want to produce that show for me, Kevin? I'll try to show up on time. You bet your ass you will. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tonight, Blunt Talk Radio with your host, Kevin Blunt. And I'm I'm here for the ride tonight, folks. I'm just, uh, I'm just, I'm old Mad Dog, your old friend Mad Dog Scipio. Um, the, uh, the crusty curmudgeon, they call me. Yes, I am. I'm, I'm an old... Old grizzled vet, I suppose, is what I am. So let's talk a little bit. I have some really good stuff on this list. Um, we did a show recently, Kevin, before you joined us. We did a show called The Rise and Dangers of Fake News. So let's talk about fake news. Um, is it a real thing? Is it uh, overblown? Is it hyped? Or is it... Um, or is it more dangerous than we're aware? I think it absolutely is a real thing. I think that the the Twitter dumps have absolutely proven that and have shown that there is a that it's dangerous and it's shown the government is in bed with people trying to steer things one way or another to try to make sure we believe what they're feeding us. Yeah, I absolutely well, believe that. Yeah, yeah, you know what? I'm, elaborate on that. I was going to ask you a question. Go ahead and elaborate on that. Well, just with the whole, the, the my first one that comes off the top of my head is the the laptop. I mean, they had everything with the laptop story. It was the truth, but they did everything they could to keep it suppressed. And everything that the New York Post yeah. said ended up being the truth. It could have changed an election. It could have changed the, yeah. the trajectory of the country. What are you talking about? The Hunter Biden's laptop? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. And, okay. And well, the, he had, it, it's, we know that he had, child pornography he had he had child pornography on that laptop oh absolutely yeah and we know that because the guy 
who he sent the laptop to, to be repaired. This is how it all started, folks. Something stupid. Again, they're arrogant. They forget, right? So Hunter Biden's laptop breaks. He sends it to the repair shop. The guy fixing the laptop goes, oh, wait a minute, man. Um, this is illegal. This something that, you know, we got to, I got to call somebody about this. Soon as he calls, don't you know every fucking FBI agent shows up? Everybody from the Secret Service shows up. They secured that laptop so fucking quick, brother. You could have said, holy shit. And that is it. Because that was about as much as you can get out of it. Yep. Holy shit. And that is it. That laptop got it got closed up, Kevin, tighter than a fucking drum. You know? Absolutely. Uh, as they used to say in the day, it got closed up tighter than a horse's ass with your finger in it. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yep. That sounds like something my wife would say. Here we go. Michael says, the question about secret society is they do actually want. Yeah. And you know what? Here's the thing, Michael. They're not pretending anymore. The Illuminati wants you to know that they want you to know they're real. Skull and Bones is actually recruiting Ivy League. You can't make this shit up. You can't make this stuff up. Skull and Bones is recruiting Ivy Leaguers, people with money, connections, power, influence. Oh, yeah, and, and a couple of good grades, too. They don't hurt. Okay? You can't make this stuff up. People come on here and they go, oh, you're full of shit, Angelo. You're just, you're just full of shit. Really? Brother, let me tell you something. We got researchers on this show that bust their hump to get it right. Everything I have here, I will take this to a court of law, okay? That's how sure we fucking are. We've been doing this show for six years almost, five and a half years. We've been called on the carpet a lot. Guess what? We've never lost. Not once. Not once. You know why? Because we're good at what we do. That's why. Um, gives them the ability to actually run the world while they're yeah, and that's the thing. It's Michael. Here, here's what it is, my brother. Michael Bear, hiding in plain sight. If you want to hide something, don't stick it underground. Put it out in the open, because you know why? People will walk past it every day. Absolutely, they'll walk. They will walk past it every single day. Some of the biggest kept secrets are in places that you walk past every day. The White House, the Washington Monument, Mount Rushmore, the Empire State Building. Oh, yeah, the Empire State Building. Um, the New World Freedom Tower in New York. Okay? There are secrets hidden in plain sight like you'll never understand. You're not, you're not capable. You're not capable of understanding how simple it is to get one over on you. Because these guys, they got the money to do it. And I think that also feeds into they the fake news the thing. They got the fucking money to do it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that part feeds into the fake news thing you're talking about. Because when people say that, they're blown off. They're like, no, you're, you're crazy for saying something like that. Jerry Lewis says a Scotsman doesn't play no games. It's that's a that's a double negative, Jerry. It's a, a Scotsman <laughs> doesn't play any games. Uh, he knew that he had. Uh, he knew I think he's he talking about the stands. All right. Well, here's the, the thing, Jerry. Um, I'm actually next week. In fact, I'm going to the Scottish Rights uh, Auditorium here in New Jersey. Um, that is a place that's hiding in plain sight. And they do a lot of good work for the community as well. So, too, do the Masons, by the way. The Masons do a lot of good work. And I, and I know a lot of Masons. I have a lot of Masons that are good friends of mine. I, in fact, a couple have already been on the show. Um, I'm actually going to the Scottish Rights Auditorium next week to see 
the Fab Four. That's the Beatles tribute band. You know who they are, Kevin? The yeah. Fab Four. Yeah. Those guys are great. I finally get a chance to see them. Three hundred and fifty dollars for tickets. Oh my goodness! Tri- to see a tribute band. <laughs> that is a, that is insane. That's a lot of money. I said, for for three hundred and fifty dollars, Paul McCartney better make a guest appearance. Yeah, no and Ringo be, Ringo better be playing the fucking drums. You know, I can't I, have, I, I can't do anything about George and John, rest their soul. But at, at least we think we think that Paul is still around, and we know we know for sure that Ringo is still around. So here's the next thing on our list: Paul McCartney, living or dead. I think he's alive. I think he's. I think he died. You do, and I what think do? we can. And I think we can prove it. Really? Yeah, I think we can prove it. In fact, I got a couple of women that wrote. You got a minute? Stay there a second. Sorry, folks. I had to get up. To, I had to get <laughs> in my book. Oh my goodness! I want to show you something. That's called "Shadow of a Baseman" by Ann Walsh and Marianne Howard. It's about the death and replacement of Paul McCartney. How it happened, why they did it. Wow! Now, wait a minute. I got one better for you. There's book number two. This is a very special book. I'm going to tell you why. Because I wrote the foreword for it. (laughs) Not only did I write the foreword for it, but I wrote all the liner notes on the back. Oh, nice. And inside. (laughs) So I fervently, obviously, I believe these are the first two. There will be two more books coming. Mary Ann and Anne will be with us at some point soon, I hope, to discuss uh, the Beatles and their uh, impact on society. So, But you and I can do that right now. Why don't we talk about that for a second? Um, and Paul. Um, the Beatles are certainly, you know, they are considered, and, and arguably so, uh, one of the greatest rock and roll bands ever in the yes. history of mankind. Okay. Absolutely. There are musicians that are better, certainly. There are songwriters that are better, certainly. What was it about these four guys at that moment in time that cemented them at the, as the best rock and roll band in history? I think it was just lightning in a bottle. I think they had the look and the sound, and it was just perfect time, perfect, perfect place. Yeah, I think I think I can't argue with that. I think that they absolutely, absolutely, without question, captured that lightning in a bottle, and it's never been to this date. It's never been duplicated, replicated. It's never been mirrored or cloned. Nobody can seem as good as some people have come to getting close to it. Nobody's ever gotten it. They, they don't have that, that the it factor, you know? Yep. Um, I'll give you a perfect example. I'm going to see, I'm going to see a tribute band. The Fab Four. Now, they're, these guys are great musicians. They look the part. They sound the part. They all play authentic instruments, okay? But they're not the Beatles. And they're they, still... They don't for- have the, the it. Here's the best part of this. You ready for this? They got an Ed Sullivan impersonator. That That's opened- amazing. Yeah. And I know the guy that does it. <laughs> That's amazing. George Trulinger. Shout out to my friend George Strulinger out there, Ed Sullivan in Fab Four. <laughs> Remarkable. But the, By the, the way, let me give you a little, a little uh, lesson in 
in radio here. When the host is drinking something, yes, you got to talk. Okay, no, I will no do that. dead air. <laughs> okay, no dead air. Um, but that's okay. You're you're going to learn on these things. It's okay. Um, I'm gonna go back to the chat here. Jerry says the Beatles were pioneers of a new kind of music. Once they did it, they forever owned the genre. You know what? I could not have said that, Jerry, any fucking better than you just did. That is the exclamation point at the end of the sentence on that. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, we don't say absolutely. We say absolutely. Absolutely. Why? Because this is blunt talk radio, by God. And we can say whatever the fuck we want, including fuck if we want. (laughs) Um, Robert Kennedy. Here's one for you. Bobby Kennedy. Hero or enemy of the state? I'd say um, hero. I think enemy of the state. You think so? I said, why do you say hero? I think he was in a tough spot after his after his brother. I think he was put in a rough spot. Okay, I, well, what about before his brother passed away? Um, I don't, I don't know. I, I'd have to study into that more. I, I think he was more of a shadow player before his brother. Okay. I, I, I think I could, I could maybe see that. Okay, go ahead. I think, I think his brother was put on more of a pedestal than he ever should have been. Paul, oh, please. Don't get me started on that piece of shit. John (laughs) Kennedy and Bobby Kennedy were the two biggest walking fucking whore masters in the United States, perhaps the world. Bobby and and John were both banging Marilyn Monroe. We know that because we have that. We know that, first of all, we have done no less than five shows on this network on the death of Marilyn the death of John, the death of Bobby, and their relationship to each other. Trust me, my friend, we got pictures from inside the White House, from inside the White House, taken by White House photographers of John Kennedy in the, with Marilyn in his arms. Yeah, that, that was the worst kept secret in ever. In the White House, okay? In the Oval Office with Jackie upstairs asleep. Or so he thought. <laughs> so he thought. And Bobby, I we, we believe, I say we, Amelia the Pitbull Chapman and I, we believe that it was Bobby who had her killed at John's order. Only the president could have made that order. Only the president could have signed off on that order. And guess what? We think he did because she had barbiturates on her nightstand and that coroner said she died of a drug overdose. There's one problem. There were no drugs in her system. Yep. Toxicology came back clean. But still, that coroner, Thomas Noguchi, who was still alive up to the point of the O.J. Simpson trial, Thomas Noguchi signed off on it because he was coerced to. Coerced to. And before his death, Thomas Noguchi came clean. He came clean. He bared his soul and said, Marilyn was killed. That's that. Yeah, I, I'd i always, I'd read to that, um, oh, I had a brain part there. Um, Sinatra had something to do with that also. Frank Sinatra had a lot to do with that. Yes, I remember reading, I think I was yeah. reading, it was Bill O'Reilly's book I read that mentioned a lot yeah. about killing um, killing Kennedy, I think there was yeah. a lot of about killing that. Kennedy. Yep. He did a bunch of those killing books, Killing Lincoln, kill, yeah. Yep, I read uh, Killing Lincoln and Killing Kennedy. I started reading Killing Jesus, but I didn't get all the way through that one. Um, Yeah, here's the thing about that. It's interesting. Um... If you look at Frank Sinatra's involvement in all this, Frank was actually a very dear friend of Marilyn. Frank was also involved in getting uh, John Kennedy elected. Because if Frank Sinatra performed and said, do this for me, 
The people did anything he wanted because they loved Frank Sinatra. You got to remember, there were a group of guys that ran show business back then. Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, Sammy Davis Jr., Peter Lawford, the Rat Pack, Joey Bishop. These guys, they owned, they owned entertainment back then. And if they said to a crowd, do this for us, no question about it. It wasn't even a question that was, you, you bet, absolutely, you got it. Incredible stuff. Incredible stuff. Um, Jerry says, I'm not sure if they had any intent of controlling any minds, but I'm sure the powers that, well, yeah, I'm, you're absolutely right, Jerry. Um, I believe absolutely, Joy, Joy Decker, Bobby Kennedy was an enemy of the state. Let me tell you what he was doing. He was playing both ends against the middle. He was fucking Marilyn Monroe. He was fucking the country, and he was fucking his brother. On top of it all, he was fighting with Jimmy Hoffa publicly, but he was doing business with Jimmy Hoffa behind the scenes. Yep, I Bobby remember reading Kennedy, about that. Robert F. Kennedy had more union money in his pocket than the union did, okay? So don't fucking tell me that Bobby, you know, blue eyes Bobby Kennedy was, you know, uh, Mr. Peachy Clean. He was fucking dirty from jump. From fucking jump, he was dirty. What do you think about Ted? Ted Kennedy? Yeah. Poor fuck, man. That's what I feel about Teddy. Poor fuck. He was the, the, the only one that had what it really took to be president. And he fucked that chance up. When he ran away from a dying, drowned girl at Chappaquiddick. He sealed his fate. He could have been the greatest president we ever had. Had he not made that decision in that moment. He left and let that girl drown and died. Mary Jo Kopechny. Let's never forget her name. Mary Jo Kopechny. Why do I remember that, ladies and gentlemen? Because I'm an old fart. That's why I remember shit. Plus, I'm a history buff, and I study, and I, I absorb like a sponge. So, now, uh, oh, shit, we're up on the 8 o'clock hour, brother. We're, we're yep. done. Wow. Let me tell everybody what we got coming. First of all, you guys, great, great night. I had a hell of a nice chat room tonight, even though... Joy tried to get everybody to come <laughs> into my studio, and Melissa was guiding them into the studio. <laughs> That's all. It's all good. It's all good, guys. Um, let's tell you what we got coming up tomorrow night. It's the Big Mouth with uh, Amelia Pitbull Chapman, the Pitbull, and she'll be here with Carrie Jeffries. And uh, tomorrow they are going to talk about. Social media with an emphasis on TikTok. The dangers of TikTok and how TikTok is destroying the world. I fucking hate TikTok. Can About I every tell you. I hate it. Three fourths of the conversations in our house, my wife will go to show me something off of TikTok. And the first thing I say is you're really gonna be sad when that goes away. Let me tell you something. My wife is right now as we speak, she's up on the couch in the living room. Going on right now, she's on hour number, probably hour number three. Maybe hour number four of TikTok. Yeah, I don't. She I don't. Will, she'll stay on TikTok three, four, five hours, and I'm not even kidding you. She loves it. She doesn't do it the past time. She like, genuinely loves it. Yeah, that's what my wife did. Mr. Grayman. Oh, Mr. Grayman's new to the crew. Oh, Mr. Grayman is Jerry Lewis. Oh, is that is that Jerry? Is that you, Jerry? He has a bunch of different a bunch of different accounts. Yeah, well, we got oh Panda's here. Hey, Panda. Panda, you are going to be on with Amelia tomorrow night on uh, social media on the Big Mouth. You're going to talk about TikTok. Um, 
That's Panda. Panda Queen, she is, uh, that's Carrie. Carrie Jeffries. Um, so, yeah, tomorrow, join them in Thursday night. I want everybody to take a look at this. I'm going to show you something wonderful. Ready? Watch this. Hold on, Kevin. Stay there. The dog pound on Thursday night. The round table. Looking forward yep. to that. This, we're calling it um we're calling it the dog pound. It's going to be a round table weekly a weekly round table discussion. And we're going to discuss everything that we talked about tonight and tomorrow. We'll talk about it Thursday. Yep. Um Panda, you like that one? Beautiful. All you got to do now, Panda, is change that stupid picture you got on your profile <laughs> and put something nice up there. Get Aaron Carter out of there. Um, so listen, you guys, join us tomorrow. This, I think, you know what, Kevin? Um, I'll, I'll, I will say publicly, uh, and I'll be kind to you on the air because I'll rip the shit out of you when we get off the air. Um, great show tonight. You did well. I'm proud Thank of you. Sure. I know you're a little nervous, but that'll go away. It has to, because if it doesn't, I will rip a new one for you. Um, good show. What do you What do you want to tell everybody about tonight's show? I had a great time. This was, yep, I'm going to, definitely, I learned a lot, and I'm going to keep growing from here. Fabulous. Well, folks, tomorrow, it's the Big Mouth Thursday. It's the round table at the Dog Pound. I'm Mad Dog Decipio for Kevin Blunt Talk Blunt. Tomorrow night, join Amelia, the Pitbull, and <laughs> Carrie. What am I doing here? Jeffries on the Big Mouth for Blunt Talk. I'm Angelo, the Mad Dog Decipio. Good night, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye. Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>